My name is Plenipotentiary Judge David Hyphen Wynn for Colin Miller. I punctuate my name because it makes me a fact and not an adjective pronoun fiction. I'm here to introduce to you to a program to bring this planet out of its adverb world for 8,500 years into a correct sentence structure communication syntax organization. Now, all 250 countries worldwide have been under this adverb verb guise by the Universal Postal Union, Bern, Switzerland, established in 1873, better known as the New World Order. As times are changing, education is expanding, this technology has been perfected, and the people of the world are tired of being raped through taxation raped through misinformation, the subjective interpretation where privileged few are allowed to go free from committing crimes and others are slapped with serious fines, prison terms for absolutely nothing. I go into court on a regular basis if there's a court hearing to show that this technology is applicable in a courtroom, that the judges will run out of the courtroom in some instances because they realize what they've done is wrong and they don't want to be implemented in a criminal offense. Others have resigned their judgeships. Lawyers have quit the bar. We have documentation for this conduct to take place. We have thousands of successful wins around the world. When you go looking for case law on the correct sentence structure communication syntax, you will not find anything. You have to be there. And you also have to be competent enough to understand what the correct sentence structure communication syntax means in order for you to have the knowledge to win your lawsuit. The publication of the correct sentence structure lawsuit and how it will take down a win a court case and disqualify a judge and attorney. The judges are responsible to do the right thing in every single case. Yet the U.S. Attorney's Office comes back with a simple question. Oh, we're supposed to allow criminals, hardened criminals, to go free because we don't have the correct sentence structure. The response back is, why didn't you have the correct sentence structure to arrest these individuals? The correct sentence structure, laws, rules, regulations, codes, oath of office, operations, so I don't have to do my job. My job is to correct the language that I know and can certify is wrong. So the syntax now is on the table. The people of the world are becoming more and more aware. We have a thing called the Internet. The Internet allows every nation to communicate with every other nation without any interference of any government or political organization to get the message to the people. Because the people want in the truth technology. They want correctness. They never went to war over a math problem. We're not going to give them a chance to go over the war over a contract. We will write the contracts, the treaties, the trust, the constitution, so that the people of the world all know where they stand. And if they know where they stand in a mathematical procedure of communications, written frontwards and backwards, so it's certified that no matter how they look at it, there is no subjective interpretation as to what it means or how it is set. We certify the 1 in 900 definitions of all words. And so with this level of accuracy, we are going to change this world. We are going to bring it together under one world order of correctness, just like mathematics. And we are going to continue writing constitutions and contracts, publishing them on the Internet so that the world can see all at the same time what the rules and regulations are of the conduct, of how organizations must operate, how governments must operate, and the freedom of the speech, freedom of the press, freedom of the travel, freedom of the grievance, the freedom of the voting. We're going to use prepositional phrases to certify that these things exist, and we're going to do it in the correct manner. We go through three stages in life. Your first stage is you do not know what you do not know. No one was aware of syntax until you saw this program. Once you saw it, you were aware of what you did not know, which you didn't, means you didn't know about the math interface on language. For, for that fact, for 8,500 years, the entire population of the planet Earth in 5,000 languages did not know about the math interface on syntax until 1988 when I broke the code. And then when you know what you know, you become a teacher and stand up here like I do and educate people. The math is syntax creates the facts on a mathematical level 
where when you write a sentence frontwards, it says the same thing when you write it backwards. People come to me with Bible passages because everyone wants to know who God is or wants to know what the Bible really says. One third of all the words are missing from the Bible and the Quran and Buddhism and Hinduism and all the real great religions in the world. One third of all the words are missing. And so when you can take whatever is written and then go out and put the correct prepositional phrases in, in now time. Remove the negative because you can't perform negative. Remove the illusion and create a fact. Now, a lawyer would write this like that. The bridge is over the river. And you were all taught when you were in fifth grade in school, never start a sentence with a prepositional phrase and never end a sentence with a prepositional phrase. Well, if you don't end a sentence with a prepositional phrase, you've got a dangling participle verb as an answer, which means your sentence is incomplete. When the government writes their instructions on most of their forms, they don't use adjectives. They only use adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb throughout the entire sentence structure. We did not elect a president on November 2nd, 1999. The United States government said that two-thirds of all the states, 38 of the 50, had to recount all their ballots. Now this was just an illusion to keep people watching the ballot counts while the 90 days runs. No law under the Treaty of Versailles, 1906, becomes legal in any federal government and anywhere on planet Earth for 90 days. Add 90 days to November 2nd and you get February 2nd, 2000, at which time President Bush was appointed the next president of the United States of America. Corporation. The democracy of America is dead. It no longer exists. We are a corporation. International bankruptcy has been around for 6,500 years. That's 70, 70 years as an international bankruptcy. It was established by the pharaohs in 4700 BC by the Masons. Pen by itself is a pronoun. If I say the pen, the is an adverb which modifies the verb pen. Modification is change, change is motion, motion is action, action is, pen, is verb. Okay, now if I say of pen, of is normally the preposition and the is the article separated, they both become adverbs. So now you have an adverb of pen, or by pen, or with pen, or over pen, under pen, doesn't matter how you do it. If you separate all the prepositions and all the articles, this is going to become a verb. Now if you use a prepositional phrase, for this pen, for my pen, for your pen, for his pen, for her pen, with her pen, with his pen. See, every time I change the preposition or change the article, I change the ownership and I change the operation of the pen. If I change the operation of pen, and I can do it 900 times, so if I put two nouns together, now I've got 81,000 variables. If I put three words together in a sentence, now I've got 7.2 million variables. I put the fourth word in, I got 640 million variables. I put five words in a sentence, I got 5.4 billion variables. And it goes on and on. So the government comes back and says, we can't do that. We don't have a computer that can break the code because the amount of terabytes of information just to write a single document with 300 words, so you'd have 900 to the 300 power. There's no computer in the world that has enough capacity to do that. My brain does it as fast as I can speak. I can syntax and write and do the conversions. The human mind is really unique in its ability to use deductive reasoning and logic to create the correct sentence structure communication syntax. And with this level of accuracy, the government said that's impossible. Well, what's the first rule of law? It's called knowledge. You don't have knowledge, you can't play in the sandbox. You can't participate. So you gotta have the knowledge to understand what is being said. Dr. Masseuse has had 200 trials over the last 13 years. The case is currently running up a bill of $80 million. And I went in there and in 10 minutes I syntaxed day number one lawsuit, two pages, 186 mistakes on it in syntax. Disqualifies day one. What happens when you build a foundation on sand? It's going to collapse. If you commit a fraud on day number one, the other 199 hearings are also fraud because they were predicated on day number one. And the judge stands up and says, I don't have a pay scale high enough to deal with this. He says, you're not a barrister. You can't represent him. I says, yes, I am. You don't have a six-year college degree to know what a barrister knows, but a barrister only knows how to read and write an adverb verb. And he's restricted to do that because they have a code. No law or fact shall be tried in court. That is their law. That is their oath. Every judge, barrister, lawyer, attorney, worldwide, all countries, all languages swear to this. Because for 8,500 years, language has been bastardized. It is adverb, verb, illusion. So you've got an adverb that's a negative adverb. Modifies the verb or as a conjunction. Fact becomes a verb. 
Shall is a pronoun, be is an adverb, making try to be a past time verb. In is an adverb, modifies the verb chord. It's a dangling participle. You've got a verb law, a verb fact, and a verb court. You can only have one jurisdiction in court. It's called the least common denominator. In a math problem, you must always acquire the least common denominator in order to solve the problem. Your least common denominator is one. You've got one jurisdiction under maritime law, one jurisdiction under maritime facts, and one jurisdiction under maritime court called verb, which is an illusion. In an illusion, 3 plus 3 equals all numbers in the universe except 6. You can't try 3 plus 3 equals 6. And act. A-C-T. All words that start with a vowel, A, E, I, O, and U are followed by two consonants means no contract. You're going to say, where do I find that rule? Look up every word in the dictionary. Get yourself a nice 8-inch thick Webster's Unabridged Dictionary and look up every word okay. that starts with a vowel and two consonants. And the, all the synonyms that reflect that word, and you will find a no contract, a negative condition of state for every single word. ACT means no contract. This is a room. This room has four corners. This is a box. In this box, this is an enclosed area. Everything that happens in here has nothing to do with the rest of the world. All the information you learn here today is in a closed area for you people only. So this is an isolated scenario. In 4700 BC, Pharaoh said, so it is written, so it shall be done. And re there was a reason for that. Because oral contracts cannot be seen or proven. Because of the argument, you got two. So if you write, if you do, did you hear what I said, what I meant, what I said, when I said, what I meant, what I said? If you don't see it written, you can't prove it. When you write a contract, you go into court, you have a syntax document. You are filing a lawsuit with an accuracy of 1 to 900 for every word. Your correct sentence structure communication syntax balance of the order of operations of cause and effect, a verb of thinking, a possessive of with, and an authorization of by the gives you an order of operations for every sentence that follows the rules of the operations of a court. So every single sentence is its own independent court as you make an argument. We're not dealing with 150 to 1 variables in an oral conversation, so your paperwork is going to speak for you. Why do you think the government or shut the government down in the United States 19 times? Because they got caught in a lie and they didn't know what to do with themselves. They had to go out and study. They have to come up to speed with this thing. Every court in the world has to do this. And when you take English through syntax through this program, and you translate it to Spanish, Spanish to French, French to German, German to Russian, Russian to Indian, Indian to Chinese, Chinese to Japanese, and back to English. You don't lose any words. It's a math problem. Just because there's 5,000 different signs and symbols for things, it's a math problem. And you can't change a math problem. That's the accuracy and the beauty of this technology. It's what you hear, not what's written. Did you hear what I said? What I meant, what I said. What I said, what I meant, what I said. I'm communicating to you. It isn't what's written here. I'm writing to show you how many ways I can write it to show you the variables, but when I speak it in one terminology, which one of the 150 variables up here that I just say to you, you don't know that. And because you don't know that, you're going to make a presumption, opinion, presumption, guess, perjury, a lie. How many different mistakes can you make? And that's only one word, or that's only three words. Try doing it with a lawsuit with 30,000 words on it. What do you think your variables are here? You're talking about terabyte to the terabyte t power of variables. You, you can't get to a fact. If you can't have a fact, what are we doing? We're lying to each other. My technology brings us to a position of accuracy that cannot be argued. And the court room is a building. That is not the document on the piece of paper. When you write a lawsuit, the paper that you have, this is the court, folks. As a judge, I swear to support the Constitution of the United States. The United States means two or more people coming together in a closed area. Doesn't this have thing four corners? Four, this is a closed area. It's called paper. It carries the cargo words. The words have terms and definitions. This book not only has a sentence, but every word in this book is defined and has a syntax quantumized definition. Every word is accounted for in this book, including a lot more words. It took Russell and I six years, 12,000 hours. We had a team of guys breaking up A, B, C, D, E. And of all the 2 million words in the English language, we got 720 words that are syntax. That's it. Pretty simple. Average person has a 12,000 word vocabulary. You only need 720 to learn syntax. And in 99% of the cases, you use less than 50 different words in an entire lawsuit to win your case. 
It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's, it's so simple. Once you get it, it's mathematical. But this is the court. This is the contract between you and the judge. The courtroom is irrelevant. The seals that are hanging on the walls are irrelevant. This flag is the correct sentence structure communication syntax flag, which advertises that this is correct. You place a postage stamp up on your corner. You sign across it. That makes you the postmaster transporting the vessel of the document to the clerk of the court, which is the port of the court. She puts her stamp on it. When she puts her stamp on it, you sign your name across her stamp, making you a postmaster of not only your paperwork and your vessel, but now you're in contract with the port authorities of the court, because it's a courthouse, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock. So you've entered a foreign vessel. Now you're the postmaster and clerk of a foreign vessel in dry dock. Now you've got a 24 karat gold bonded document that has to go into court. But if you're going to sign the stamp on the front, you have to also endorse the back of the top of the cover page because that's called an endorsement. How many of you can cash a check at the bank without endorsing your check? Nobody. Because if you take the document and you roll it up, when you unroll it, the top of the back, when they seal those scrolls, they would put a seal on it. That was the endorsement that gave the document its value. And not only that, this book is bonded together. When I went to court in 1997, I used to have three ring notebooks with my paperwork in it. I went to testify. The judge says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm testifying to my book. He says, that's all loose paper. He says, you got to have a bonded book in order to be an author with the authorization to talk about the authority of your authentic document. And it's a document. That's why you get a docket number when it, the vessel comes to the court and it gets docketed. Staples Maritime Law Staples is not bonded together. However, you put the staple as a mechanical device to hold the papers together and then take super glue, put a drop on it, and the capillary attraction will fuse the papers together. You can have three forms of bonding. You can glue it, you can stitch it, and you can rivet it. I sent Janet Reno a letter charging her with treason against the United States, and she sent me back a two-page letter with six three-eighths of an inch brass rivets. There were six big, thick, brass ribbons to hold two sheets of paper. She says, you want bonded documents? Here's a bonded document. <laughs> You're gonna use your navigator stamp. Your navigator stamp has two bars through the dollar sign. Now you have your dollar signs come in two forms. This is a Federal Reserve note, and that's a gold certificate. In the United States since 1900, the red fox stamp was the only one that was published with two bars through the dollar sign. And that was published on the 2nd of November, 1999, when the United States ended its third bankruptcy and became sovereign. And then when we went out and bought up all this, our, my students all over the United States went out immediately and bought up all the red fox stamps. And then we started putting them on all of our documents to sue government officials. The judges ordered that all the, the red fox stamps be canceled and, and seized wherever they were in the United States and destroyed so that they didn't have any gold standard stamps out there. But we've had several thousand of them to use on all of our official documents that we use constantly. They'll put the file stamp. First you get a, what's called a receive stamp, which means they're going to receive the documents and they're going to issue a summons to come to court. You have to then serve the document on the people and have your return service from the, the people you're serving a document on. And those have to be attached, the return service, back to the court with your lawsuit. And then they will give you a file stamp. And then it goes to the judge for when you're going to have it and schedule for hearing. The clerk of the court, who is the port authority receiving a vessel at her desk, is supposed to put her initials on that stamp upon receiving it. And it, at the same time, the, the one that they keep for their file, you sign your name across that, as well as all those you're going to serve on the other people, making you a postmaster, bank banker, and judge because you cancel the stamp. That gives you the authority as a postmaster to transport the vessel of the lawsuit between your home and the port authorities. You take jurisdiction, capture it. As long as you got their stamp, you sign across it, you captured their jurisdiction, you become the clerk of the court. The practical purpose is that not you are the individual that's gonna be transporting this document. If you don't sign it, you don't become the clerk, and you don't sign your name across the stamp, you've skipped over the postmaster's position to move the vessel. How does it go from point A to point B? Is it magic? You're creating a paper trail 
of authority. You're the author. You have the authority and postmaster to move that. All judges are postmasters, bankers, and judges. Look up bankers in the Black's Law Dictionary. It says, see postmasters and judges. Look up judges, it says postmasters and bankers. Look up bankers, it says postmasters and judges. And judges only issue opinions. The word order, O-R-D, volume two consonants, means no contract because he wrote the whole order in adverb verb. It's an illusion. You syntax any judge's orders he gives you. Even if he says you win, here's your win, an adverb verb. You haven't won anything. It's just an illusion. You syntax it and you say, I want to correct one. Write up your own order and syntax and have him sign it. He'll do it. He doesn't want to think. Remember, the reason for thinking is to abolish thinking. Thinking hurts the brain. Thinking hurts the person. That's why we got ditch diggers and punch press operators, because it hurts too much to think. And people that want to think and they become great thinkers, you don't see them doing physical labor because they've learned how not to hurt. Their brain is a curiosity machine that just can't get enough. Masonry worldwide goes up to 34 degrees. In Manley Hall's The Secret of All Ages, the amount of information that is in that one book is the accumulation of 8,500 years of history of all the different religions that have taken place throughout history, different cults, Pharisees, illusions that manipulated mankind, the, the creation of the boogeyman to keep people scared so that they could always look for protection from something. The Masonic codes, no matter what language it was written in, had one third of all the words missing. My technology through algebra puts the missing words in and brings it all into now time. It takes all negative out of the language and only brings it into a now time positive. So it allows me all the hidden secrets that are built into all the sentence structure. And so when I get with a group of Masons, they have their agenda of what they believe. But their beliefs were based on adverb verb illusions. So then it's my job to then syntax it and bring it into now time facts and show them what their true meaning of whatever they want. The amount of information is so vast that for me to publish it, it'd be like trying to syntax the Bible or the Quran. I mean, these are huge books with thousands of pages. It would take a lifetime to do it. So based on each individual's needs on whatever their limited education is based on, I will answer questions on a one-to-one, -one, question to question basis and syntax it for you. And I'll do it for anybody at any time. It changes your entire perspective of what truth is or correctness. That means that my technology abridges all the Masons worldwide. These the secrets that they think that they have are misinformation. And I don't practice any specific religion or faith. I believe in God. I believe in goodness. I maintain my life to be in a correct position. And by being correct about things on a mathematical level, it allows me to talk to audiences that come from thousands of different cultures, definitions, religions, and maintain peace amongst my students. Here's a technology that has to be translated to all six billion humans without insulting any faith, political belief, sex, customs. I mean, when you take something that's going to unify an entire planet because it's correct, remember, no one ever went to war over a math problem, and all six billion humans use the same mathematical syntax. But how many different languages? You've got 5,000 different religions, you've got 5,000 different languages, and it keeps everyone divided, called Babel, where even though they have all this Babel for 8,500 years, they still use the same math problem and they don't fight over it. So by bringing communication skills down to a math problem, we remove the ability of an individual to lose his temper or maintain an argument. I'm going to define the word God. Everybody goes, how can you take religion? And everyone in this room has a different faith and talk about religion in a mixed community. There's a thing that we use a triangle to explain this. We all want correctness because this here is your truth. Now, when you believe that you are correct, and you have truth, you will make contract. And as you are all taught throughout your entire life, you will always honor those contracts you make. And there you find your God. Okay, now, so what is God? We all want to know who the creator is. We all want to know what the origin is of our beliefs. Every person in this room has a thousand independent definitions. You've read books, you've talked with your parents, your friends, your relatives, your church, you've explored your own dreams as who God is. So everyone in this room has independent definitions to fulfill these three terms to come to the, what this definition is, and it's unique to you and you alone. You can go to any church 
And the minister is going to tell you one definition, but then if you ask, what did this man say to me just now? What did the priest say, or the, the minister, or the rabbi say? You're going to get a hundred different definitions of what people heard because they are using their own life experience to do what's called subjective interpretation of what was just said to them. Now it says in all the religions that God created man in his image. And the synonym of image is imagination, creation, art. And so all the terminologies that you absorb throughout your life are to define one thing, the difference between good, which you classify God in creation, and evil, which is destruction and bad things. You have to learn about bad and you have to learn about good. It's called perspective. So you know the difference between right and wrong. We choose to be good because it's a better form of life. Those that are bad don't live in our society as bad. We put them in jail and they get penalized. We spend our entire life searching for one definition of this word. And everyone, all six billion humans on planet Earth, have different definitions than the person standing next to them. And it's unique to you and you alone. That's what your faith is. All the stories that I am told as to what this word is defined at, has, I have never heard two stories the same and all my travels and all the people I've talked with. Your ability to read, understand, subjectively translate information in your mind and come up with a conclusion to be good is what you have to do. You can look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be an honorable person. I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna love my children, take care of my family, and I'm not gonna go out and do evil and hurt people. And that's basically the bottom line of where we are. So who is God? God is the creation of your thoughts and the information you have. Hold a thought in your hand. Show me the three-dimensional object of a thought. Hold God in your hand. Show me the three-dimensional object of your God. It comes from your thought and all the information that you have absorbed. What we're doing here in syntax is we're showing you that the Bible is written in the Quran, in the Jewish Bible, and all of these different communications worldwide are written in adverb verb. They've left the words out. Why do they leave the words out? Because they can control you. So by learning syntax, you can go back and put the missing words in. In now time, you can remove the prefixes and the suffixes, which are the past and the future, and go to the root words. Then find a root word that means now time information, not the future, not a word that means no contract. If you go through any Bible phrase and you see a word that starts with a vowel and two consonants, Get a book of synonyms, look up all the synonyms, and go ahead and list those down and put those in and then put the correct prepositional phrase in front of that word. You will learn how to build a sentence correctly from that phrase. In my books and on my website, I have the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer has been syntax. One of my students stands up and says, I don't like the way you wrote that. I says, good, here's a book on synonyms. Replace any noun you want in the Lord's Prayer with any other synonym that is coordinated with that and you will create a new Lord's Prayer. And then you've got to read it backwards using the opposite preposition. And whether you read it frontwards or backwards, it will still say the same thing. And you can write 10,000 Lord's Prayers and they will all say the same thing. Now you show me a technology that you can write the same thing 10,000 different ways and it never changes its meaning. That is unique. Just like you can't change a math problem. It's either right or it's wrong. There is no, well, it's almost there or it's almost right. You want to get down to the crux of what is correct. That is where you want to be in a correct position. And that's why this technology scares the courts because no law, which is a negative condition and no fact is the only thing that gets tried in court. Remember the sign says no parking. No is an adverb, modifies the verb parking and they put a box around it. So it's an enclosed area and can't be considered because it was a lie in the first place. And no is a negative condition, so how do you no park? You can't create a negative condition of state. Where's my fact? How can I pay a fine for a no fact? Well, I'm going to use a Federal Reserve note. Re meaning no is serve. So I have a negative condition of payment for a negative condition of violation and a negative condition of court for a negative condition of law. So therefore, I have one condition of nothing. So therefore, it's voluntary compliance. And to make sure you volunteer to comply with negative, we put a gun to your head and say, choose. Right? You've all been there and done that. Everybody's got a parking ticket at least once in your life. That's my terminology of finding out what you know about what your, the difference between good and evil is. There's 5,000 names for God, but there's an infinite amount of ways to subjectively interpret how to get to that belief. The, the bottom line is you're either good or you're evil. Right? you got two choices. It's a plus and minus. There is no gray area. There is no stand in the middle and be zero. 
I did a theology seminar for 47 ministers from 16 different religions. One man stands up and says, I'm an atheist. And of course, all the other ministers, they do the little hum. Yeah, but in the morning when you wake up, you stand in front of a mirror and you say, I believe in me. I don't believe in anything else in the world. While you're believing in you, do you have specific rules and regulations that you're going to conduct yourself as an atheist? He says, yes. I says, and you go out there to be a good person, aren't you? He says, yes, I am a good person. And you know the difference between good and evil, don't you? As an atheist, he goes, yes, I do. I said, well, guess what? You made a choice between good and evil. You have faith. Your faith may not have a definition that correlates with the other 47 men in here, but you have faith just the same, and you make choices. Remember the movie Matrix? When Keanu Reeves, Neo, is in the room with the 100 TVs? The architect. And the architect is having a conversation with him. And what does Neo say? He says, it's all about choice. And you make choices every day, left or right, up or down, in or out. And you're going to make your choices every day to be good or evil. And if you know what syntax is, you can make a mathematical choice. You have better pieces of information to make better decisions to be good. And then if somebody with evil wants to come at you with an illusion called adverb verb, you can say, that's a lie, and I can prove it. And that's the one thing that would happen in front of Wasilewski back in 1985. Wasilewski said, you can't prove that I lied to you. You know what? You're right. I can't prove that. He says, I know you're wrong. He says, yes, he says, I'm wrong. He says, but you can't prove it. He says, when you can prove that I'm wrong, he says, I'll give you what you want. And that's what changed everything. And I went out and I found out how to do it correct so I could prove it. We're going to go through the courtroom procedures. Courtroom is divided into five different sections. And most people don't even know they're in this elaborate illusion. Some courtrooms only have two planes, but you will have a plane. And the judge sits on the top plane. So he is removed and he's in a box. And he has his flag or his seal on his box which means he is an independent jurisdiction. He can either see you, hear you, or have any jurisdiction. He is an actor in black robes. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 44.1. It's the only place where it is found it says judge is an actor. The clerk of the courts, however, sits on plane number one in most courtrooms. Up until the time I put this presentation up here and blew the secret on clerks, they then took the clerks off of the same plane as the as the claimant in the Vasily, a Vasily is a servant employee of the courtroom, which is your prosecuting attorney, and you are the claimant. Don't call yourself a respondent because re means no speak. Defendant means no contract. So don't get involved with no contract language. The clerk was then moved off of plane number one into its own separate plane. When you take the witness stand, you're going to move yourself from the common and you're going to put yourself into a box. And in that box, the witness cannot hear evidence or give evidence and cannot produce any testimony. So it's mute argument. The jury box is on a different plane as well. And the jury box, when you look it up in Black Sock Dictionary, says this is an enclosed area that cannot witness, cannot see witnesses or hear testimony. Yep, read it for yourself. It's all been published. They're in a box, aren't they? Which is an enclosed area. And therefore, there's no continuance of evidence between the jury, the judge, the claimant, the Vasily, or the clerk. The whole thing is all mute. Nobody, everybody is talking to nobody. The contracts are written in adverb verb. Nothing is being contracted, nothing is being said. And what did I tell you about what is the court? The court is the document. The Constitution are the words on the document. If the Constitution is written in adverb verb, and I swear to support the Constitution of the United States, between two people who said nothing about nothing on nothing, in a closed area of nothing, without a postage stamp, and without a flag to establish jurisdiction, I've got nothing going in and nothing's coming out. How much money you got? Well, it's $275 an hour to talk. <coughs> And you have freedom of speech at 275 bucks an hour, and as soon as your money runs out, we will make a decision. We are practicing banking and commerce, and no matter what you think is happening, it never happens. Then you get to file an appeal if you don't like what nothing happened. How do you spell appeal? <laughs> APP, which means no contract. And what does the word appeal mean? It means the higher court will forgive the lower court for doing nothing about nothing with nobody and up and agree with it. Unless it is something that will affect public opinion about how the court system operates, some genocide or apartheid case. Then they'll go ahead and they'll make a little bit of noise about it. And everybody knows O.J. Simpson, right? That was a $40 million trial and it ran for like nine months. That was a big joke for the simple reason that they had to go ahead and take somebody and do an elaborate advertisement to the world about how our justice system works. That's all that was, just advertisement. And since then we have, what, 20 or 30 different crime shows on TV that advertise and tell you what's going on. 
but that's not the real world. It really doesn't happen. Maybe one case out of a thousand they might take and run a CSI on, but most of 99% of the time they just fluff it off. They don't have time or money to go ahead and chase it. So it all comes down to who you are, what you know, and what you put on your documents that come into court. I can write on a document, one of my syntax documents, file it into court and put one line in there, I want hot coffee on my table. The courtroom door says no food or beverages. And yet, when I sit down at my table, I will have a pot of hot coffee because I like to drink coffee. And I have a contract that I paid filing fees for to have hot coffee on my table, and that contract says that I'm gonna have hot coffee. Just to prove a point that that contract has jurisdiction in the court. Try it, I guarantee you'll get it. You say, your honor, so what? Court's out of order. I don't have my hot coffee. I put it in my contract. <laughs> Bailiff, go get this man his hot coffee. It's part of his contract. Do it. You'll have fun. These planes breaks it up and creates the illusion. You can dissolve the planes and dissolve all the boxes by writing it in your document. Your lawsuit says there are no planes in this court. We are on a level playing field. We're going to use syntax language. There is no adverb verb illusions. And what we say is not 2 plus 2 equals 4. And you do a disclaimer of that. Or you do it, not a disclaimer, you do a claimer. A closure is the word, closure. All maritime law, under maritime law, all contracts must have closure. Well, when you're in a syntax level of mathematics, believe me, you have a closure. Our documents, because we've had, through trial and error, and we're up to 2,200 federal lawsuits in the last 15 years, we are at a level where we take into consideration all these different points of closure that are necessary. When the Supreme Court of Hawaii wanted to sell 1.2 million acres of Hawaiian homelands without lodial title, I was responsible to stop it. So I took the 50-page document that the United States Federal District Court in Honolulu, Hawaii, through the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court judges all went to Washington, D.C. to go up against John Roberts and the eight Supreme Court judges and argue why they had the right to sell 1.2 million acres of Hawaiian homelands. And I went ahead and I took the 50 pages and I syntaxed them, and there wasn't one legal sentence in the entire 50 pages. It was just written in adverb verb. And it only took six sentences to articulate the fictitious conveyance of language and the damage that was caused because they don't have lodial, L-O-D-I-A-L. -L. Location, D-I is original, A-L is contract. No location, original contract to sell Hawaiian land. And the post office doesn't have jurisdiction because they never had the correct sentence structure communication syntax. On any treaty, trust, or contract with the Hawaiian people since Cook landed there in 1789. That totally wiped out all claims that the United States government has against the Hawaiian people. And so with that information, the United States Supreme Court reprimanded the Supreme Court of Hawaii that you people are illiterate, you can't read and write, and you tried to perpetrate a fraud against us, go home. You don't have lodial title, you can't sell the land. With six sentences and a two-day head start, and I defeated them in one page. And if I can do it to the Supreme Court, and they have standing to take a Supreme Court of another court and knock them down, then the language that sets precedence, that syntax has jurisdiction over all fiction. And it does. So you guys have the power and the ability to go out there and use this technology successfully. On the back of my business card is the whole procedure of how to prosecute judges and attorneys. It's already written there for you. <laughs>
It takes time, 22 years now, to get to this seminar since Syntax was introduced to the world. And I'm the only guy standing up here and, and Steve over there now that are doing seminars. Worldwide, we're the only two guys. But the videotapes and webcasts on Skype and GoToMeeting and radio shows and TV shows are helping promote this on a global basis and making everybody aware. How, many, how long did it take for uh, you guys to find out that Michael Jackson died? 15 minutes after he was dead? I mean, YouTube, Google, Yahoo, AOL, I mean, the entire planet, six billion people knew about it 15 minutes after he died because he was popular. So the world is becoming very small. Everybody's cell phone rang and said, here's the news. Everybody that was on a computer, no matter what channel you were on, it bleeped in. No matter what channel you were watching on TV, it bleeped in. The whole world knew about it in 15 minutes. Well, syntax is gonna be the same thing when it goes pop. One day the TV is gonna turn on and no matter what channel you go to, all 200 channels are gonna say, we're gonna have a dynamic shift and send you people are gonna to have to learn syntax because the whole world is shifting communications. We're gonna have a one world order of truth, correctness, one world money of correctness. The wars are gonna stop. We're gonna have balance and prosperity. And we can do it because we're gonna be honest and correct. And then you guys can go to bed at night and not worry about somebody dropping a nuke on you tomorrow because you got correctness. And that's what we all want. That's what we're all learning. You've never had the correct sentence structure communication syntax treaty on any land contract or mortgage in the history of this country's writing. It's gonna be fixed when enough people are educated and you vote in syntax. See, right now, we're not here to break the system. We're here to educate and correct. When I did this, when I originally said to my mom and dad, I'm gonna go out in the world and I'm gonna teach this, they said, don't complain about the government because you don't have anything to replace it with. You can't sell, tell somebody he's a liar if you don't have the truth in your hand. I couldn't call Judge Wazalewski a liar because I didn't know what his truth was or what my truth was because I was misled. So I had to go out and spend a thousand hours to get to where we are today to have a correctness at a mathematical level. You can okay. study, be prepared, learn how to be a writer because when this thing takes place, the government's going to say anybody that can read and write in syntax and do corrections and learn how to program a computer, we have immediate employment for you. Wages are probably gonna start at about $100 an hour and up based on how much experience you have. And the whole planet's gonna get rewritten. I keep getting emails, when is somebody gonna write a program to rewrite the internet that fast? To go from adverb, verb to syntax. Well, like I said, 900 variables for one word, two is 81,000 and so on. The computers can't do what my brain does. Steven over there can do it. Russell Gould can do it. Greg Bartell can do it and a hundred other guys up in the United States that I've been trained. They can all do it and do it efficiently. And when you guys learn it, it just opens up your whole world. You can see a lie. You have x-ray vision over everything. And it's a lot of fun. Then nobody can screw around with you anymore. The cops won't stop you. The courts don't want you in there. And there's nothing wrong with a new world order that's correct where nobody can go to war anymore because you all know how to do things correctly. As long as you've got two, you're gonna have controversy. So a new world order is not a bad thing, provided you have your freedoms to travel, your freedoms to communicate, to write, your faith. It's not gonna be any guesswork as to where you stand in that faith because you're gonna have a law that protects you with syntax. Having the, the Masonic teachings is no more, no different than any of the religions in the world to teach you the difference between good and evil, how to manage people. They're the ones who've been pulling the strings on the New World Order for 8,500 years. Because for every 97 followers, you've got three chiefs. It's always 3% manages 97%. That ratio hasn't changed since the caveman. And the cream always floats to the top. The syntax separates the wheat from the chaff. There isn't anybody anywhere on this planet today, I don't care how high up in the Illuminati they are, that I can't prove they lied. And I don't have any restrictions as to how high up I go. They still can't take their lie and shove it down our throats because we've proved the lie, we've proved the fact. And when you put them both together, choose, choice, matrix. This program is the movie Matrix. A, B, and C, one, two, and three matrix. This is the entire program of Matrix. It is the machine of government I'm Neil, fighting for my existence as a human. And what is the virus that destroys both the machine and the people? The virus was the illusion of communications. And syntax destroyed. How did Neil destroy the virus? He says, okay, virus. Neil represents three plus three equals six. And Smith had an infinity amount of Smiths which was the infinity amount of numbers that could be wrong around three plus three equals six. And he says, okay, I surrender, take me. What's the first thing the 
The virus of wrong tries to do is rewrite correctness. And every time he tries to do it, it says, well, 3 plus 3 doesn't equal 7. That's out. 8, that's out. 9, that's out. And inadvertently, you watch it take place in the movie, boom, all the virus is destroyed because it uses up all its energy to prove a lie, which you can't do. And when it's done, the contract was, I can live as a human because I'm correct. And the machine can operate because it's correct, because we need the machine and the man has to service the machine, the machine has to service the man. We're going to go through the parts of speech. There's only 10 of them. And when you guys went to school, you probably were 10 years old and you studied about prepositional phrases. Well, when you were 10 years old, 11, 12, you were going through puberty. Your hormones made you a complete mess. And after you got done with puberty, the only thing you could think about was sex, boys and girls. And so whatever you learned during puberty was totally like thrown out the door. And the rules and regulations that gave you, you probably weren't paying much attention. You didn't think your parents loved you. And you were just a mess. So by the time you got into the reality of teenagers, Again, you were a batch of hormones and misinformation. And then when you finally got out of high school and you were 18 years old, you didn't care much about school. It was just sex. According to Freud, everything is predicated on sex and you gotta have better cars, better clothes, better makeup, better hair to in incorporate better sex. You really didn't care much about the world and that's why you're 40 years old. You wake up one morning and say, we're out in Kansas, Toto, and you wanna come here and learn about why the whole world is screwed up. I was the same way, but I overcame that. And these are the parts of speech. The adverb is used more in language worldwide than any other syntax of communications. Now, the adverb is a modifier. Also remember a vowel and two consonants. The adverb operation of syntax is a no contract issue because you're modifying the condition of a fact. If you're going to modify something, that's perjury because it's no longer the original fact. And now the adverb creates the prejudice of your limited education or your limited knowledge to go ahead and sell your opinion or prejudice to another individual by modifying the condition of the fact in front of you. When you take a fact and you modify it with an adverb, it becomes what's called a gerund verb, which means a noun used as a verb. They explain it to you, but it's still a lie. Then they go ahead and they tell you when you went and took sentence diagramming that you need a subject. Well, SUB means no, inject is contract. Well, you want to create a no contract in a sentence? It goes back to a math problem. The math problem is 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27, right? So if I have a fact times a fact times a fact, I'm going to get a fact. But if I do 3 times 3 times 3 times 0 equals 0. Or if I divide, it's still going to be 0. Because a fact times a fact times a fact times a lie equals a lie. There's your math interface on add, subtract, multiply, and dividing as to if you're going to be correct, you're going to be correct all the time. You can have a sentence with, let's say, 30 prepositional phrases completely done correctly and take the word for out instead of for the witness's knowledge, the witness's knowledge, and then go ahead and write 29 prepositions in the correct order in the sentence, but because you dropped the first four, now you've got an adverb, adjective, pronoun, all the way to the end of the sentence and you've lost all prepositional phrases because you committed a lie to start the sentence, therefore you've lost everything. So you can't make any mistakes in this technology. The math will not support it. We use the math to go and check it frontwards and backwards. When you write a sentence backwards, all the prepositions, we're going to get into that when you do sentence structuring, all the sentences backwards, you have to use the opposite prepositions. Every sentence we write starts with a preposition for. You have two verbs, is and are. Simple enough. And the word that follows the verb is the word with. My entire book, my website, every document, every lawsuit I ever wrote follows these same rules. And we'll expand upon the sentence later after I explain this. But these positions of where these prepositions and articles take place are very unique because every sentence is in a complete court hearing. And you've got to follow the rules in every sentence. And you can't violate them. You do. You make one mistake in a whole entire document and you made a presumption before the fact it proves you don't know what you're doing. That it was an accident or you don't pay attention to the accuracy of who you are and what you're doing. Don't do something by yourself. Always work as a team. I don't care, the more people you got in your team, the better. Because then you got more years of experience to check. That's why law firms do not operate where you have a lawyer working alone. He always has five or ten other lawyers reading and signing his papers to say he did it right and absolutely avoided a fact at all costs. Because if you create a fact and you're a barrister or a lawyer or an attorney, you will be disbarred. And that goes clues judges. Remember, no law or fact shall be tried. And they have to stay within the confinements 
of nothing, otherwise they don't have lodial title, they don't have constitution, and now they've committed perjury through trespassing on a fact, which they don't have title to. That's why they have to break the law 24-7. Now the adverb modifies an adverb modifies an adverb. The adverb then can modify a verb. The adverb modifies an adjective, and the adjective modifies a pronoun, which is connected by an adverb after it. The only word that can follow a pronoun is an adverb or a period. When you take two nouns and you put them together, black pen, black is a noun, or black is a fact, pen is a fact. But black colors the pen. Therefore, the black now becomes an opinion. Is this a charcoal pen, an ebony pen, or a black pen? See, I can have there's 1,200 shades of black. So what shade is it? And even though this is black, my shirt is a just a little bit different color black. So it's subjective interpretation as to what it means, so therefore it's an opinion. Like he has a red shirt on. Try and explain color red to a blind person that's never seen color. Impossible. So your opinion of an adjective to color something or to modify something is impossible. Therefore, your opinion, presumption, modification has no bearing with the facts of what you're trying to do. And the adverb like we do the United States of America. United States of America. You got the preposition of in the article the, but when you separate them, they both become adverbs. The adverb modifies the adjective. The adjective modifies the pronoun. The pronoun is connected by the adverb, which then modifies the dangling participle verb America. Now the verb is your action. Now the adverb can modify the verb, and the verb, if it stands alone, is an R. Because you use prepositional phrase, prepositional phrase, verb. Prepositional phrase, prepositional phrase. Because the verb stands alone, it doesn't become a pronoun because you are making a claim on your document that says verb is the condition, is a singular, R is plural. And you take jurisdiction for the verb is an R. Because you define it, it is now what it is on the contract and no one can change it. If you do not take that position, it becomes a pronoun. Is an R. Is is used for the is. It's a prepositional phrase. Therefore, is is a noun. The is. Adverb, verb. Now it's a verb. For the is is. For is the pronoun. Is is an adverb. For the is is. For would be a pronoun. The would be an adverb. The first is would become an adjective. And the second is would become a pronoun. You see, I can change the value of any word I want based on where I place it and knowing what the value of syntax is. So I just showed you an adjective verb, a pronoun verb, a verb verb, and a noun verb. Four different conditions of state. When I did a sentence, the, the is for the, the. I got three PhDs in Atlanta University in my seminar, and they stand up and say, that doesn't mean anything. That's nonsense. I'm going, well, let's put a syntax to it. We've got a pronoun connected by the adverb, which modifies the adjective, which modifies the pronoun, which is connected by the adverb, which now modifies the dangling participle verb is, I mean the. So I've got a pronoun the, I've got an adverb the, a second adverb the, and a verb the. Three different syntax definitions, and I can go to a dictionary and prove that those words are found with those syntaxes in that sentence. It's not an exercise that the the is for the the, it's an exercise that I have four definitions in every dictionary of the wor world that says, there's a syntax definition for a pronoun the, an adverb the, a verb the. If I want to put another one here, it would be an adverb, adjective, pronoun, and make another adjective pronoun. And I'd take four conditions of the and show you the definition in the dictionary. And the PhDs in English now said collectively, we have PhDs in stupidity because you have the power through syntax to identify every word in the world with all parts of speech and you can prove it mathematically and you know what it means. And they never knew how to do that. 28, 29, and 30 years respectively as teachers never once applying syntax to their classes, only teaching an adverb verb dialect. This mathematical procedure is an absolute in communication skills. These are the only ways these things can be found. Where do you sign your documents? On the bottom, correct? Because they have jurisdiction for everything in front of and above. Everything is in backwards. Authorization runs backwards. The first word in the sentence does not have jurisdiction in the sentence. It's the last word. The only thing that appears in front of the last word is the, the, and then you got to go to the next word, and you got an adverb, verb, so therefore this has to be a pronoun. The pronoun is modified by the adjective. The adjective is connected by the adverb, which then connects to the pronoun in front of it because there's no prepositional phrase to certify the the. The word the to start the sentence. If I said for the the, then it would be a five, six, seven, and this would become a two, and then a five, six, seven again. 
we'd have two prepositional phrases, but this is the danger of dropping one word and not starting your sentence with a prepositional phrase. Once you drop the prepositional phrase, you create an illusion. And like I said up here with math, a lie times any truth is still a lie. And that's what happens down here. What do we have here? We have a, a pen. In order for you and I to communicate, we first have to have an object that we both understand. We assign it an alphabet, the English alphabet. Could be the Russian or any other alphabet, okay, but we, you and I choose English. 26 letters, we're going to spell this P-E-N. If you and I sign a private contract and it's spelled C-U-P, it's between you and I, and this is now a C-U-P, not a P-E-N. So we agree on what the alphabet is, how to spell it, now we have to give it a definition. What are the terms? The term is that it's going to be used for writing. And that's going to be what the definition is on our contract. However, if I take the pen and I make a fist around it, it's now a stabbing tool, a concealed weapon, and I'll be arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. It's how you use something which makes a determination as to what the definition of it is. But according to our communications, this is going to be a pen. And so we have a contract of this object. Now, who owns it? Is it for your pen, for her pen, for my pen, for his pen? If I change the ownership of Lodio, I'm going to change the definition of where this belongs. So how do I establish this to be a fact? We have the alphabet, how to spell it, what the object looks like under descriptive definition, who owns it. And now we have a fact, and we call that a positional lodial fact phrase. So that every word has 900 definitions as a fact. And if we have 900 definitions, 900 ways to certify this to be the fact of ownership, then we have a correct phrase. When you put correct phrases together, then you get into the multiples of order of operations of sentence structure, 900 times 900 times 900 times 900 times 900. And when you're talking that kind of variables on one sentence, and you go with a seventh word or an eighth word or ninth word, now you're into terabytes of information for just one sentence. In our technology, it's accurate to the terabyte level. Every sentence has a terabyte of information in it, and it's accurate to that level. And that's where the judges can't get around that. See, this course is written on a 29 reading level, folks. High school is 12. Bachelor degree is 16. Graduate is 18. PhD is 20. And we're writing and reading on a 29 reading level. That's why you guys get headaches and you get, to, you get just so, so wrapped around this thing. Those of you that quit school and never went to school or home studied, whatever, you weren't dumbed down. You, you don't have that handicap that everyone else had. And you have a great, that's why you failed English because they couldn't dumb you down. When you're dealing with an illusion, the subjective interpretation of where you put value or the weight of that word, where you put the emphasis on that word, is going to make a determination how it is. Adjective, coloring. Adjective always modifies the pronoun. Adverbs modify the adjective, which modifies the pronoun. And an adverb can make several. If I'm going to go ahead and say the David Wynn Miller syntax, my the would be an adverb, David would be an adjective, win would be an adjective, Miller would be an adjective, syntax would be a pronoun. That's where you put a string of names together. Corporations may have five or six names in there. Law firms might have five or six names. That's where you're going to have a bunch of adjectives in front of the last one would be in a pronoun. Where's my prepositional phrase to certify the value of any word? As long as you're going to have a condition of color, it doesn't exist because it's an opinion. Now, the pronoun is any word that stands alone. Pen is a pronoun because there's no contract to make a determination as to what this means. If I ask you for a pen, you're going to give me an object, pull out a ballpoint pen. However, you ask me for a penny, I'm going to reach in my pocket and pull out a penny, which is coinage. Does 2 plus 2 equal 4? See, he's saying pen to me, but I'm hearing penny. Just like two, T-O, or T-O-O, or T-W-O. So you've got to be able to communicate with somebody and have a contract to do so. That's why so it is written, so it shall be done, because the oral communications are not what you think they are. The position, as I explained before, is the terms of what your contract is. And once you have your terms of your contract established, we then can have the lodial ownership, which is original. And with these two together, we now have a fact. And once we have a fact, it will become the positional lodial fact phrase. And then you have past time. Past time would be words that end in ed, or the adverb from, or the prepositional phrase from. Either way, you are removed from now time. There is no such thing as the past or the future. There is only now time. You will always be in now time. When you correct the Bible, the Quran, Masonic codes, you have to translate it to now time, because this is where you're going to be living and working with this technology. The future? is a crapshoot. Hasn't happened yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. So it doesn't happen. And the conjunction is and and or. And again, and and or you have to define. It's not a presumption. The word and by itself is not a conjunction because it doesn't attach to anything. It's a pronoun. Or is the same thing. It's a pronoun unless you take jurisdiction for it. Every word that you use on your papers, you must define those. If you want to and and or as a conjunction and it is and are as a verb, 
you have to separate a definition under your abbreviations and say these words mean these things and put it right up there at the beginning of the document. That way a judge can't say that's going to be used for the and. If I say for the and, now you've made a noun out of it. Or the and. That was an adverb making and a verb. I changed it again. Take jurisdiction for how you use it. This is a sentence, but I'm writing this sentence in the form of a graph. Because your mind is a mathematical <coughs> configuration, a graph is very easy for you to comprehend. We're going to say, for the claimant. Whenever you start a sentence, write a contract, make any kind of claim, you have to say you have knowledge about what you are doing. Of the facts. Is and R equals your thinking capacity. With the claim. The claim, you've got, this is a cause, this is an effect, thinking is your action, this is your possessive. Now, what is the claim? You have two things. You have a plus and you have a minus. Claim, this is going to be a term. These are going to be the terms, not a definition, because definition, DE, means no fine contract. Because everything was written in adverb verb, the definitions in all dictionaries are written in adverb verb. So we went to the word terms. Once you establish the claim, you have to establish if that a positive claim or a negative claim. And then you have to go ahead with the contract. And what this is going to be is going to be the correct sentence, structure, communication, syntax, language, contract. And then the last thing is going to be by the author. Author, authority, authentic, authorization. First two letters, AU. What's a symbol for gold on a periodic table? AU. And if you have a sign, simulation, signature, it's a simulation, SI. That's why they always tell you put your signature down, write it in cursive, because now you've, you're signing a simulation to an adverb verb contract, and you're participating in the fraud by your own simulation. The, the taxation program worldwide is you have to give them something, an assigned receipt that says you're giving it to them, but they don't give you a receipt back or any evidence that you paid. They just kind of leave you alone if you participate. So I'm telling everybody, for those that are government agents, if you're here, that pay your taxes with the correct sentence structure, communication, syntax, and pay your taxes because you're not smart enough not to. And the IRS came back to me and says, you're a tax protester. You're telling everybody to pay your taxes with the correct sentence structure, communication, syntax. I'm going, yeah, and how does that make me a protester? He says, because we don't have any correct sentence structure. Says, oh, you just confessed to that you have a lie. And I'm telling you to be correct, and you're confessing to me that you're a liar, that you're extorting money through a lie. And this is right? Now, the reason we bring this up, we start every sentence with four because we found it was the strongest preposition to start a sentence because it takes you into an argument or takes you into the facts. Of was then used as the, for of, the effect. We only have two prepositional phrases in front of the verb. And is and are your verbs. Okay, with the claim, after you have an action of thinking, you have to have a possession. Over here, when you have knowledge, you're human beings, you have a brain. You see things, you witness, and you store information in your brain, just like the computer holds it. But until you hit the execution button to take the information out and move it into sense, you're claiming one thing in your computer. Your brain functions on the same way. You store information from your world experiences, and then you move it through thinking, and you make a claim, which is possessive of that one of all this knowledge that you've stored up in your head. Then you have to define whether or not that claim, the possessive knowledge that you've claimed, is a plus or minus. Or are you looking for a reward or a damage? Then you have to define how that contract is going to be argued or put to what these terms are. And that's where the whole program comes in, where you're creating this contract. And then somebody has to take responsibility for that sentence. And when you write backwards, this here becomes, these are all separate facts. These stay the same. For the author of the contract, or correct sentence structure, communication, syntax, language, contract, then you would bring your is down with the terms, plus or minus, of the claim, with the facts, by the claimant's knowledge. Backwards, it says the same thing. I'm using the opposite prepositions for each one of these words, but each one of these stay the same. With the contract by the author, or with the author by the contract. For the writing of the checks, for the driving of the car, for the car of the driving, for the checks by the author. See, frontwards and backwards, there are conditions which are paired, cause and effect, that always stay together. So when you read the sentence backwards, you keep these things together. Leaving it as it is, technically you can remove any of these your nouns, author, contract, terms, claim, fact, 
and claimant's knowledge. You can put those any place, move all the terms around, and the sentence will still mean the same thing. So there's six different ways you can write this sentence forwards, and six different ways you can write it backwards, and it will still say the same thing. If you can't obstruct the meaning of something, it is what it is. And that's the unique thing that I can prove when I write my lawsuits. And if you can write the sentence backwards and it means the same thing as you wrote it frontwards, you know you did it correctly. All right, now this here is a personal injury lawyer's writing. This case has been going on for three years. The lawyer in this case is becoming frustrated because he can't get the insurance company to settle with him. When you write a legal contract, there's a law that says you cannot sign a blank sheet of paper, and a paper must have two legal sentences on it. As you can see, there's only part of a sentence that was brought over from the backside of this one. So this is not a legal sentence, nor is the autographs legal because they're both initials. You have to actually autograph something, not simulate it. And then the claim section is put into a box because Federal Reserve notes or non-conclusive contract values are not legal. So therefore they box it and anything in a box is an enclosed area and can't be considered. So therefore your, all of your IRS claims that they send you here in the United States are all boxed, written in adverb, verb, double space, and italicized. So they're using four conditions of fraud to remove it and create the illusion. This here is interfering with us. This is the word justice, J-U-S-T-I-C-E. J-U is no law, S is speak, T-I is title, C-E is judge. Judge title speaks no law. That's what justice means. You want justice? You get the same justice as everybody else gets. No law. That's one of the traps. You know how we found that? The dome in the state of Wisconsin has Lady Justice standing like this. It's a mosaic on the ceiling of our Capitol Dome. And it's J-U-S-T-I-C-E. I'm going, why would you break a word up? like that. So I looked up the symbols of J-U-S-T-I-C-E in the Masonic codes and this is what it says. So they were advertising. And Authority always runs backwards, so there it means judge title speaks no law. This is your title. In the contract states, it's die, which is original, strict is jurisdiction, court of the Australian territory. T-E-R is terra. O-R-Y is contract. This is the title you put on your paperwork. When you file in the United States District Court, it means United is no citizen, states, district is demon god of the underworld for trickery in a closed area called court. You make a presumption and you're gonna be tricked. And when you file this, they're gonna go ballistic on you, but this is where you're at. This is the correct title. Don't forget, what you put on your paperwork is the contract of what the court is gonna be. If you wanna call it a demon god court, you're gonna be treated like a trick. You're gonna be denied things. And if you use the correct sentence structure, you're gonna get correct sentence structure. Truth in, truth out, fiction in, fiction out. That's another statement. You guys have all your adhesive contracts you've made since you were 18 years old are an adverb verb fiction. You believed and gave value to that fiction because you were entered into commercial, used money to give it value. And your contract has proved that that illusion you gave value to, whether it be a mortgage, a car payment, your driver's license, marriage contracts, divorce contracts, all these things, fiction in, fiction out. You can't change boats in the middle of the stream. You're gonna fall in the water. So now that you learn syntax, you can go back and you can write correct sentence structure, communication, syntax, contracts. And when you enter into those, those are legitimate. This here is a graph. These are the, the title sites are in the back of the business card. These are the words. Now, the numbers can be anything you want throughout any country you happen to go through, but the causes of action of these conditions of words follow in a specific order. You have to be able to prove each one of these words through the title site and the definitions which are expanded upon on both the website and my book if you wish to study those. These are the players. You got your, your judge who works with the DA barrister who works with the sheriff bailiff, who works with the clerk of the courts, who files papers, and then the police department who goes out and investigates on the street or is your professional witness. Let's say this pen is a knife. 
Okay, now a knife, the word knife is a fact, or the word gun is a fact. And it's laying here, and the police officer picks it up, and he says, the gun. Doesn't say for the gun, by the gun, of the gun, for the person's gun. He just says the gun. That was an adverb making gun a verb. The noun, or the fact, killed the person, but the verb was what was presented to the jury. That's misrepresentation. This person here misrepresented his files. All clerks must have a four-year college degree in order to be a clerk of the court. To be port authority officers, to receive the vessel to be docketed at the port of the court. Now, when it's docketed, the clerk will usually look at it to see what department it goes to or reads it, but allows the modification of language from the police to come into the court, and then it goes to the sheriff's department, detective bureau, to do a further investigation, maybe check up on things at a secondary level before it's given to the barrister or DA, district attorney, to go out and then find the laws, rules, and regulations to fit the definitions that were brought to establish the violations of civil rights. And then those points of information would be given to the judge. If the modification of language from the police officer and the clerk and the sheriff are not stopped and corrected because they can't read and write and they cheated on their civil service exams, high school exams, and they're all part of the conspiracy, and the DA doesn't stop and correct it before he gets it to the judge, these guys all work together. None of them can read and write. It's just a big act. So are they guilty? Do they have knowledge? I take their paperwork and I syntax it and I prove that everybody who touched this piece of paper in all things from the street to the jury and back to the finished order from the judge making a determination that it's a lie. It's a syntax lie. Did they have knowledge? Absolutely, because it was mathematically certified by every one of them. It wasn't just where one made the mistake, they all made the same mistake. They all acted together. If we don't lie together, we will lay together. So they all lie together. Now you have to give closure. Did any of these individuals give closure that they were going to use the modification of language to extort rights or to obstruct the information that was presented in the courtroom? The answer is no. None of them stopped to give closure as to use syntax to define the words and prove that they were wrong. So the closure of every one of these individuals participated. Did they port the knowledge into the court? In other words, did they docket the evidence? Yes, they were all guilty of docketing evidence to go ahead and damage somebody through fraud. Did they all participate in fiction language? The answer is yes. I have everyone that touched the documents had to sign off. So we have a signed confession that they all participated. Did they now port a correction? You have, give closure and port it, then you have to certify the fiction modification and port it. Yes, they all put it in, they all signed on to it. Did anybody stop and correct it? Nope, I do. Did they act together in a conspiracy? Anytime two or more people participate on a wrongdoing, you have a conspiracy. Now that comes under Title 18, Section USC 3. That's an association after the fact that a fraud has been perpetrated and all individuals participated together to make that fraud go forward without obstructing. T Title 18 USC 3. So the conspiracy first is brought as a civil after the civil is argumented, then it's responsibility of the DA's office to go back and criminally prosecute everyone under conspiracy criminal, which carries a 15 year prison sentence and $15,000 fine. But when they modify language to extort money and privileges, it now goes up to $25 million in 30 years in prison. My program, however, carries 1,225 years of prison time. So I think it's up to $60 million in fines. I only got to prove one to get all of it, which is easy to do. Okay, now, did they obstruct? Absolutely. They obstructed evidence, they obstructed witnesses, they obstructed paperwork because they modified everything from the original facts. Did they deprive the individual from having a correct trial, correct information, correct evidence, correct due process? The answer is yes. And so all these get checked off. Did they all act together to reduce this individual beyond the point of recovery to put him in a box in orange pajamas? The answer is yes. That's a 30-year prison sentence, Rico. Was the guy damaged? Well, I only got to prove one for damage, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times five. I got 50 damages. <laughs> Is the guy damaged? Yeah, I think a jury would pretty well cite through that because you've got a chart on a whiteboard in front of a jury to make and take all the evidence, syntax it, define it, and educate a jury of 12, 
And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that somebody lied, that somebody damaged, that the court was just a, an illusion. The syntax is going to disrupt a whole lot of industries. It is going to make a whole lot of changes. There is going to be a lot of unfairness as this thing works its way through the system. People who don't know will become harvested. People that do know will be doing the harvesting. And the information is made public to everyone equally. The intelligence of a person that has a 200 IQ will more than likely harvest a person that has a 100 IQ. And they can't defend themselves because they don't have the technology to defend themselves, both in the form of contract nor tools. And this is the strong always conquer the weak. That's the life of nature. It's how nature weeds out the weak, just like in the animal kingdom. And the humans are no different. Humans are, the word human means monster. It means to feed upon its own kind. They're cannibals. And the technology in syntax is the only way you're going to get fairness. Where I am being fair to one person, the other 3,800 people who hired attorneys that lied to their clients, that knew that syntax was a lie, all got swept up in the same trap. But did any of those attorneys who knew how to read and write stop and fix it and correct their clients? Did their clients sue to be corrected? No, not one single one of them came forward to do it the correct way. So it isn't that it's unfair. People don't know they don't know. And when you don't know what you don't know, you find out what you do not know. And then you study until you get to a position where you know what you know so you can go out there and stop and correct it. And the only thing I can do is teach seminars like this here, make videotapes, put stuff up on the internet so that the world can study. Everybody has a different learning curve. 50 years ago, we didn't have television, which brings all this information. And even the information that we got from television was censored. Today, you got internet. That is totally uncensored. Look at us difference of thousands of pro millions of programs you can look at on the internet for getting information. And there's a lot of things you don't agree with on the internet, but that's your choice to turn it off. It's the other people's choice to turn it on and study it. Advertise syntax on open television or radio or the internet to create awareness of the syntax and the condition of language and then have it voted in. And once it's voted in, then the government will have to change because it's the will of the people where 51% are going to make changes.